so far in this whole course we have talked about factorization with polynomials inequalities and polynomial equalities and factorizing them okay so now what we're going we are going to do is basically move on to exponential function now exponential uh, functions if you guys don't know exponential function have characteristics that are variable lies in their exponent so how does it look well the variables like we have all seen y equals x then 2y is equal to 3x and 4y is equal to 36x something along those lines okay now exponential function has characteristics like this if this is a f of x with 2x. Now you see the exponent lies in there, the x lies in their exponent, which is also equal to 2 raised to x. Okay? Now using this function, y equals 2x or f of x equals 2, uh, 2 raised to x, let's go ahead and uh, plot some points. Now notice I can't draw the graph on this page line because it won't be accurate. So just for example, okay, if you have f of x, let's start with the easiest one, 2x, which basically means y equals 2 raised to the x power. Now we make table values for x and y, right? So if you plug in 0, it will be 1. If we plug in 1, it will be 2. If we plug in 2, it will be 4. If we plug in 3, it would be 8. Now what happens if we plug in negative exponent? So if we plug in negative 1, it would be 1 over 2. If we plug in negative 2, it would be 1 over 4. And things along those lines. Now when you graph this, you will see that ranges are all positive numbers. Domain is real numbers and the graph is continuously increasing. Okay? Now the graph, I can't... It should go like this should be continuously increasing okay the domain we said the domain we stated in this function is all all real numbers okay now the range range is all positive numbers because no nobody goes over here no this is y axis and it's called a range Okay, this is called x-axis, which is called domain. Okay, domain could be all real numbers because here's a negative, here's the positive. So it's all real numbers. Y-axis cannot be negative because it's continuously increasing. And we say that this is the x-axis, is the asymptote, which we talked about in the previous section that this exponential graph never touches the asymptote, right? Asymptote line is never being touched. We also stated that asymptote line is also known to be, if you want to memorize it, it's also known to be un untouchable line, okay? Untouched line by the graph you're applying. So range would be all the positive numbers, positive infinity, I can say. And the graph is still continuously increasing, okay? So let's go ahead and take a new, new example. Now as you move on, the example would get harder and harder each and every time. They would try to confuse you, but the thing is, you're, you don't need to be confused. All you need to do is remember the, the previous things, the basic concept that you learned, and use that concept in this to understand the whole procedure to graph. Okay, so you have g of x equals 4 raised to exponent, which is x. Now if you plug in x and y, we basically get, if you plug in 0, we would get 1, if we plug in 1, we would get 4, if we plug in 2, we would get 16, then if you plug in negative 1, we would get 1 over 4, it just it is a reciprocal of a positive exponent, okay, so you don't have to get confused in it, if you, even if you don't have a calculator, all you need to do is, if, if you know 4 raised to 1 equals 4, and 4 raised to negative 1, if you don't know that, you don't need a calculator, you basically would flip this around, okay? This over here right now is 4 over 1, you reciprocate it, um, and it becomes uh, 1 over 4, and this works for any 
kind of number as well. So let's see if if I can give you a better example. If n number is raised to one, the first power it would be equal to n. If n that number is equal to negative one, be one over n. Easy as that. Okay. Now this is a key point that you need to remember, so I'm gonna double highlight it. Okay. So then if you have negative 2 over here, it would be 1 over 16. So your 2 is 16, negative 2 is 1 over 16. Easy as that. Okay, now let's take one more example before we actually can see how the graph basically looks like. Okay, so these are just, I'm going to introduce you to how to basically take, the, take out the x and y points of an exponential function. Okay. I'm not going to erase this because you need to understand this. So I'm going to keep it for a while and then erase it. So if you have h of x, which is 2 raised to negative x, okay? Now this is might be confusing, but it's really not. Okay? When we plot points, 0, it would be 1. 1, it would be Positive, negative 1, 1 over 2, whoops, sorry. Then 2, it will be 1 over 4. You can see what's happening over here. Because, why, how is it, how does this goes against this procedure? Well, it's because it has, it already contains a negative exponent on the top, right here negative x. So if you plug in positive for a number, such as if you have 2 raised to x, if you zoom in this area, it would look like negative x, correct? So if you plug in well, 1 for x, it would be negative 1. But if you plug in the same thing, which is negative x, if you plug in minus 1, it would be minus 1, which becomes plus 1, so it basically becomes 2 raised to 1. Okay, that is the reason when you plug in negative, uh, negative integers, you get positive values. And when you plug in positive, you get negative integers. Okay, just wanted to clear that thing out. So if you're still confused on it, you can replay this video. Now, now you'll see that h of x is equal to 2 raised to negative x. And f of x is, is equal to 2 raised to x, a reflection across the y-axis to each other. Let's understand why. So let's see. Um, now I'm going to erase this up. Now I'm going to compare this equation over here with its reflection, which is, let's say, f of, not f, h, oops, h of negative x is equal to 2 raised to x. Okay? Now this. No wonder we have a reflection, okay? Because h of x, now the thing I'm going to prove is this. Let me rewrite it clearly because I might be getting it, but you guys might not. So what I'm trying to do here is if f of x is equal to 2 raised to x, and if f of negative x is equal to 2 raised to negative x, you see, this is why we have reflection over here. Since it's saying that 1, if you plot 1, and if you plot negative 1, it would be reflection to each other, no matter where they are plotted. If they are plotted over here, they're reflection to each other. They're still reflection to each other, right? That's what I'm trying to point it out. So these graphs are reflection as well. So what we need to do is basically, we can take this and we learn that if you have negative 1 over some power, negative 1, negative x over 1, we can flip it around, it would be 1 over x, right? We learned that in previous sections. So what we need to do now, since this is containing a negative exponent, we can rewrite this as, this would be equal, uh, let's make it h of x equals uh, 2 raised to the x, and this would be h of x is equal to 1 over 2x, okay? So the whole procedure then would be 1 over 2 raised to x or 0 
raised to x. And you would see that this graph is a decay and this graph is a growth. Okay, and you can tell that by the leading number is that if this number over here, there, there's a circle in the blue, if that number, let's say n number, is greater than 1, okay, it cannot be equal to 1. If it's greater than 1, then it's a growth. Okay? If it's not, if n is less than 1, then it's a decay. Whoops. Okay? I should make this more clear. That when you have a growth, it would basically look like this. Uh, when you have decay, it would basically look like this. Whoops. Something along those lines. Okay? Now, these are some actual... Um, uh, arbitrary points that I took off the textbooks and the, the course I'm doing so I'm gonna make this video on exponential functions is what I thought and the thing is guys that we actually think about this groups of exponential function of having a family there are two branches one branch is where the base of the exponent is always x uh, let's say but, but let's say but what about the second branch? The first branch of the family is the base in the first number longer than one, like we said. And the other branch is the family uh, base is between zero and one, okay? So if you have a number between zero and one, but not one exactly, it would be a decay graph. But if you have uh, n number greater than one, it would be a growth function. But it cannot be equal to one because anything raised to one is just that number. Okay, now what we are going to do is uh, I have graphed some points, graphs on an exponential function. I'm just going to draw them so you guys can have an idea of what um, all of the function related to this graphs over here, how do they actually look like. Well, they are nothing different than what we learned in the translations graphs. Okay, they're just some kind of structure and then they're they're translated. So if you have f of x equal 3 raised to x, right? You go over here, you have a graph like this. Okay? Then you have g of x is equal to 3x minus 3. That would be first the graph was here. Now it's moved down two units and it would be here. Nothing low. Okay? Now you have h of x, 3x minus 2 on the exponent, okay? Basically means if you the first graph was here, now it's moved over here, okay? Two units over to the right because this is horizontal translation. Now the last one, g of x. 3 raised to negative x, okay? This would be, the first graph was right here, right? We all agree. Second graph would be right here. The reflection of this graph. Okay, this is not drawn properly, but there is a reflection when you graph it, when you actually plot those uh, correct number of points, you can actually see that they are being reflected off of y-axis, across the y-axis, okay? so. That's basically it for exponential functions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you guys can do me a favor. There is a, a Facebook page down in, below in the description. Can you go ahead and click on, like on that page? It will really help me a, lo a lot. And if you like this video, if you enjoyed this video, uh, click like, comment and subscribe. It literally, uh, literally helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching.